Stand by for action. The Starships at War Fleet Captain's audiobook and ebook collections. Available exclusively at getabook.today. Getabook.today presents Silver Eagles, an experimental science fiction story cycle by Shane Lachlan Black. Copyright 2024. Chapter 4 We're in the middle of a school day. Moo said as he beheld empty grass-covered land the size of at least six football fields just behind the main education complex. It's 80 degrees, white clouds in a blue sky, and there isn't a single student out here. Zoni was starting to get concerned about Moo. He didn't seem so much irritated now as he did wistful. He had already pointed out Jefferson Academy canceled their football program, the same program he had told stories about since his days as a cadet. Yili was busy with her ATMS. Hunter was a few paces away with his comm link. Sir, I'd like permission to take a closer look at all this and perhaps try to repair it. If what we just saw and heard isn't the exception, I would hate to see the status quo. This school and others like it are supposed to be training our future officers in addition to future citizens. Admiral Powers didn't sound enthusiastic, but at the same time he couldn't deny the captain's logic. It wasn't the first story he had been told about the secondary academies. While many of the students who attended went on to pursue degrees in civilian universities, the effect of sloppy academics and wasted budgets would not only cause Skywatch Academy's high standards to deteriorate, the rot was guaranteed to find its way to the fleet. That was something Skywatch Command wasn't likely to tolerate for long. Better to address it now than to let it get out of control. Captain, this isn't what the Alliance hired you for. Enemies foreign and domestic, Admiral. I know it's going to cause some political problems and it's guaranteed to reveal some unpleasant realities, but my old man and his old man taught me the only way to tend the garden was to remove the weeds root and stem. When we're done, I think we might end up better off than we started. Hunter had to admit nobody was better at the four-star sigh than Benjamin Powers. All right, I'll run the necessary interference and give you some latitude to freelance, but you keep me in the loop. I don't want any surprises, and I definitely don't want some hotshot media crew ambushing me when I'm trying to order lunch. But sir, don't you support a free press? I take my roast beef on sourdough seriously, Captain, the Admiral growled. Understood, sir. Very well, power's out. Hunter returned to the athletic field expedition just in time for Yi Li to turn and face the far side of the grounds. She pointed. That building. The library, Mu asked. If this map is current, Yili replied. Hunter activated his comm link. Computer, this is Captain Jason Hunter. Request security access. Enter designator. Victory 7715. Voice print match. Identity confirmed. How can Arjun help you today? Synchronize lookdown scanners with Atmas 906. Identify structure and location. A moment passed. Subject structure is listed in Core 5 Navigational Database as the Mildred Havershire branch of the Kalawak County Public Library. It has been closed to the public for 41 days. It is located at 31 degrees north. Stop. I want to see it, Moose said. I want to see why it was closed. Agreed, Colonel. That information might answer a few of our questions. Hunter led his officers across the pleasantly green field between the school and the large fence separating the campus from the public facility complex along the parallel street. Jason surmised at least the groundskeepers were still employed. The trees, fountain grass, and decorative azaleas were impeccably kept. The complex looked exactly like an architect's painting. A koi pond had been installed along the east side of the building, complete with a set of lights so it could be enjoyed after dark. The fish are still alive. Zoni said. 
Mu's jaw tightened as he noticed a small group of people standing near the entrance where the public notices were posted. Nothing was inside the glass case by the main entrance except a single bill to notify visitors the library was closed until further notice. There were three women and at least ten kids ranging in age from toddlers up to about age eleven. The colonel got to the entrance first. It was hard for Hunter to put into words the reactions among the moms and their kids. Mu was a giant, even among Argent's crew. By the looks on their faces, Hunter imagined the kids probably thought he had just walked out of a storybook. The only thing missing was his club. The colonel scanned the notice and zeroed in on the last line. He moved to the door and punched the after-hours emergency code into the keypad. A few moments passed. Finally, there was a great rattling on the other side of the door. A thin man emerged and looked up into the colonel's chiseled expression. Can I help you? Do you have a copy of Hound of the Baskervilles? Moo said in an ominous tone. He cast a shadow that almost covered the attendant. I beg your pardon? Why don't we go look and see if we can find it? The colonel pushed past the man and opened the door all the way. The man stumbled backwards as Moo tugged the collar of his shirt. I'm sure it won't take long at all. Do you have a card catalog? The colonel bumped and pushed the attendant back. He pointed frantically. But, but they can't come in here. They're my guests for the day. But, the argument continued as Moo pulled the man towards the literature section. The moms and the kids wandered inside and started looking around. Yili thought it was almost eerie how small they looked. It was as if they were exploring the ancient ruins of a civilization that once revered the written word. Hunter wandered past the study rooms, the art facility, a collection of musical instruments and electronic recording gear, a second art exhibit, a small lecture hall, and a crafts room with what appeared to be a number of woodworking tools. You know what upsets me the most about all this? Hunter said as he surveyed the main room. There's got to be 50,000 books in here and they're all under lock and key. What is it about the bureaucratic mentality that practically forces publicly funded facilities like this to lock the doors and not let anyone in? You said it yourself, sir, Zoni replied. Leadership and stupidity react like matter and antimatter. To have one, you've got to get rid of the other. Makes you wonder what else they cut the funding for, Hunter muttered. So what are we doing today? Honora Doverly appeared next to Hunter. Apparently the morning coffee had kicked in. At least it explained the second command shuttle departure that had shown up on the captain's comlink. Doctor, you're just in time to witness Moo's rescue of literacy from the committee to make children miserable, Hunter replied with a grand gesture. Behold his first victory. While the quiet exploration of the abandoned library continued, Hunter activated his comlink. Computer, pull all public records related to the most recent complete fiscal year budget for libraries in Kalawak County. Compare to the budget for the same fiscal year for Jefferson Academy. Report similarities. Use adjusted monetary units common to both sets of data. A moment passed. Analysis complete. The Kalawak County Public Library District and Jefferson Academy both reported deficits of more than 6% of their annual approved budgets in the most recent complete fiscal year. Pull the public meeting agendas for both organizations. What steps were taken to alleviate the deficits? A nonprofit literacy organization applied for permission to conduct a fundraiser on behalf of the library. Their request was denied. There are no records of any anti-deficit measures in the public records of Jefferson Academy. Any further information on the library fundraiser? According to the Kalawak County Municipal Court docket, a motion was made to enjoin the same nonprofit organization from operating any fundraisers for a specified term. Zoni stood by the captain and listened to Dominique's report. Analyze the injunction and compare to both organizations' fiscal calendars. Report any unusual correlations. The injunction expired on the last day of the library district's fiscal year. Zoni looked at Hunter with a shocked expression. They ruined the fundraiser on purpose. What are we into here, Commander? Civilian courts are in on this? Someone hired a lawyer to stop a bunch of concerned citizens from opening a lemonade stand to help the neighborhood library? Hunter noticed Honora was busy reading through the material Yili had gathered with her Atmos. One of the toddlers wandered over to the captain. She held a rather large children's book over her head with both hands and said, Can I have it? The book was titled, Astro the Dog Goes to Space. The child's mother arrived a moment later and knelt down. 
I'm so sorry. She's been asking for this book for a week. Hunter knelt as well. Is this your favorite? The child nodded. Well, then you can have it, but you have to bring it back in a week so other kids can read it too. The toddler smiled and hugged the book. She ran back to the other kids. Moo returned. I think I've instilled a new appreciation for Sir Arthur Conan Doyle in the municipal workforce. There's some shenanigans afoot hereabouts, Colonel, Hunter said. I think your instincts were spot on. Let's go see if we can do something about it. This is ridiculous, Honora exclaimed as she turned the pages of Yeely's report. See? Now you're upsetting the doctor, Hunter quipped. He led the Argent delegation back out the door, fully prepared to return to campus to follow up on the evidence of fundraiser obstruction. Another mom was hurrying towards the library entrance. She stopped when she saw the captain. Are you the new teachers? Hunter looked back and then at the woman again. Me? I'm just a volunteer. I heard they were starting a new school. I wanted to make sure my kids get on the waiting list. Where did you hear about a new school? Moo asked. From the other parents. They said it's going to compete with Jefferson. Something about a camp and a scuba class? Four officers looked directly at Lieutenant Colonel Moody. Chapter 5 See, for my money, what the school system really needed was a Citadel-class battleship. Captain Hunter looked extraordinarily pleased with himself. He had started his watch two hours early so he could commandeer the portside lateral sensor array. One of the key perks of being the captain was he could chase anyone out of anywhere aboard the ship. First Watch normally had six personnel assigned to port LSA, including one of Zoni's junior officers. Today, it had one. The mechanisms on the edges of Argent's primary hull were designed for tracking enemy contacts during deep space engagements, which meant they were among the most sensitive and formidable instruments aboard. As an added bonus, they gave the captain extreme high-resolution visuals on Core 5 planet-side structures. It took a little tinkering with calibration and multiple orders to get Argent into a powered geosync orbit over a surface contact that wasn't cooperating with Core 5's traditional orbit tracks. But once everything lined up, it only took the captain a few minutes to accomplish his task. Zoni had equipped the captain with a list of all the facilities in the educational district that included Jefferson Academy. The library computer had taken that list and compared it with the district budget. The result was a list of facilities abandoned due to funding cuts. It took almost an hour, but Jason now had aerial photographs of every property that was not currently in use. The waste he had uncovered would make headlines, but at the moment media investigations were not the priority. He took an extra ten minutes and got photos of all the libraries that were closed as well. They would be his gift to his Marine Ground Forces commander. Captain, I'm going to schedule you for a psychological evaluation, Dr. Doverly said. She was standing in the doorway of the LSA control bank with her arms folded. I'll save you the trouble. I'm clinically insane and getting worse by the minute. I'm a danger to myself and others. Well, that goes without saying, Doverly replied. But I need something on paper before I prescribe some powerful tranquilizers that will keep you and your wild ideas manageable for a day or two. There's a very capable facility in Pleasantwood where the nice young nurses and orderlies will bring you applesauce and picture books every day. They might even let you go outside. You know, that sounds more inviting than I think you intended. Tell me more about the nurses. Now I'm sure you're trying to turn me into an alcoholic. Did you figure out how the details of your meeting with the Jefferson administrators got leaked in under an hour? Moo suspects one of the committee members liked what they heard and quietly alerted a few friends. Proves we might have more than a few friends among the savages. Did Cochrane get the shore leave situation under control? Honora nodded. Cobb has all non-essential personnel on rotating three-day liberties. Watch and ops are by the book. Outstanding. There. Hunter jumped to his feet and swiped the last photo print off the range analysis scope. Want to buy a school? How about a summer camp? The captain swept by the ship's chief medical officer. One might have concluded he was planning a surprise party, which wasn't too far from the truth. Your field trip is due to arrive on Flight 3 in about 15 minutes, Honora said in a deadpan tone as she walked behind Hunter towards the lifts. Why are you following me around? Don't you have some ritual to perform with strange flora, little statues, and a bubbling cauldron? I was willing to give you the benefit of the doubt until you ended up surrounded by concerned parents at an abandoned library. 
so I'm keeping an eye on you before you do something even more deranged. Then I suppose I'm in good care, Hunter said as he held the gate. Going down. Honora marched into the lift, fists clenched. The only question is how far, she muttered. 